once you open that floodgate of someone asking how do you spell this word and you spell it for them then there is no stopping that and so we're really going to be hitting um strategies for how to spell words that we find difficult oh, um what in the world is on my floor i know we didn't paint today i know we didn't use marker well we did use markers today is that a marker what is that What's up guys and welcome back to my channel if you're returning if you're new here my name is Devonte kelly and i'm a first grade teacher in the tennessee area and we're going to do the things that we do every single week we're going to start this video by getting ready for the upcoming week as you guys know it's sunday it's about 11 30 here and we're going to be getting into what we're doing now my checklist today is a little bit different than what it usually is because we had our in service this past Friday, some stuff had gotten done then and some stuff did not get done when it usually does. So take a look here. We do not have to do friends of pencils. That was one thing that um, our EA did for me on Friday. So I do not do that today, but instead um, I have some graded papers I need to give back to my kids. So you're going to see me sorting that in their mailboxes today. I've already graded them. They're already in the grade book. I literally just have to give them to them. And I'm also going to be putting together their homework. So I'll show you super quick what that looks like when I'm doing that as well. Once we're done with that, I'm going to get my flip charts ready for this week. Flip charts are what I use as my... Um, visual component to my lessons. I know a lot of people might use Google Slides. Um, I would use Google Slides just because of ease of access, but one thing that I think that Flip Charts has over everything else, or its real name, Active Inspire, um, one thing that I think it has over everything else is that the ability to annotate and it stays on the page. So whatever I write on that particular page, it stays on that particular page. I can go back and forth and it does not, I don't have to delete anything. Um, I can save it with those annotations. I can go back. If it's the next day, I can go back to what we wrote the day before. And so that's one thing I really like about flip charts. Uh, Active Inspire is that I'm, I have the ability to do that. So that's why we use that. But you're gonna be seeing me get that together. Always weekly plans. I have my big stack of papers. I'll be sorting that stuff. And then you'll see me actually put stuff together for a boost. I've, put out my video a couple weeks ago about how I do boost, what I use for boost, and I have those papers in my big stack of things to be sorted. So that'll be going into their center bins and uh, so that way they're ready for the week. But I'm not gonna hold you, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, it is about 2.30, which means I'm like getting this stuff done in and out. Um, I always give myself a four hour time frame and I've been getting stuff done in like three hours for the last couple of weeks. So it makes me super happy. It means I'm super focused on what I need to, making sure I'm getting all the stuff I need to done and not worrying about anything else. Um, but I wanted to do a quick check-in just to talk to you about what we've got upcoming this week. So for math, we're focusing on uh, counting on to subtract. So using addition to help us subtract. We kind of talked about that last week when we did a uh, number partners of 10. While 10 was our focus, we also had kind of like another underlying focus, which was using number bonds 
to make addition and subtraction problems, kind of show that relationship between addition and subtraction. This week is just kind of like building on that stepping stone. So this week we're gonna be taking those subtraction sentences and turning them into those missing add-ins. Um, we did get a little bit of practice with that last week. Our lessons kind of scaffold some of that stuff in. Just go ahead and get prepared for this week. I don't see my friends having a huge issue with it, um, but we'll see what comes up this upcoming week. So that's what we got for math. For phonics this week, we're doing short U, Q U, and then introducing N C H. So N C H isn't really a um, skill necessarily, but we do want to at least highlight that. So that way, when we get to words like lunch, punch, it just has um, those extra blends and digraphs, those extra sounds uh, rather than three sounds, they're four and five sounds. So just understanding that. And then we have our high frequency words for the week. Here are the new ones. There are a couple that we have that are reviewed from the uh, last couple of cycles. I don't really include those in this, but we do still review them in our lesson. So this board just focuses on what those brand new sight words are or high frequency words are. So some of them are not on there and that's because they're on our wall because we've already talked about those before in other cycles. Um, in EL, uh, our knowledge block, we're continuing working on our many different things. I know I showed y'all that in last week's video. So this was just a continuation of that. We have another build day where they're making and building their things. The next day is going to be a revised day. So really looking at um, what you have. What can we do to improve our many different things? Is there something that we need to take away? Is there something that we need to add to? And then that day is built on that. And then the rest of that week is where we're going to actually start our writing. So writing about our management thing. We're going to start off with how we used um, habits of character. And, they're on, and then we're going to turn around and talk about how we use tools. So we have two different writing tasks. One is our unit three assessment. And then the other one is our actual performance task over the entire module. So I'm super excited about it. I can't believe that we're already almost done with module one which also means that we're almost to fall break. I can't imagine even thinking that we're already a quarter of the way, almost a quarter of the way through school. So it's just mind blowing to talk about. Um, for writing and grammar, we're focusing on beginning writing. So we actually um, will be starting with our writing journals tomorrow. So I'm super excited about that. And the next couple weeks is just all about our routines with writing. So day one, we talk about how we write in our journal, where our picture goes, where our words go, and they practice that. The next day is talking about how we give feedback. So um, when people, how to share your work with others, and then what you need to do if someone's sharing their work with you, how to tell what they did great, and how to tell how they can revise, which is a great segue from, or not a great segue, but it's a great way to include things from our EL block into our writing because we're talking about revising magnificent things and we're also going to be talking about revising our writing so great great way to combine uh, the content and go across content areas um, we'll also be talking about using um, one part sentence stems so where one part of the sentence is blank they can fill it out we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about um, how to spell so one thing you know if you teach kindergarten, first grade, even second grade, is once you open that floodgate of someone asking, how do you spell this word, and you spell it for them, then there is no stopping that. And so we're really going to be hitting um, strategies for how to spell words that we find difficult. Um, and the way we do it is you sound it out, and then you put graphemes that match that phoneme. You put letters that match that sound. And once you do that, if you still think, mm, this don't look too good, you're going to underline it to let me know, hey, I tried on this out, but it's not that great. I don't know if I'm right or not. This one has that underline. I'll know. And then because you know that I know, you can keep writing. Um, so that's a way to, to um, handle that stifling of, I don't know how to spell a word. I'm stuck on a word, so I can't move on. You know, we want to make sure we get past that. And that's how we teach it in um, our first grade land of how to spell words. You you sound it out as best you can. You match sounds with letters that you know, and then you keep moving. Um, but that's what that week, this week will be consisting of with our writing. So it'll be a lot of um, mini lessons and then them writing themselves. And then in STEAM, we're switching back from science to social studies. 
So we're switching back over to social studies. This week we're focusing on map symbols and cardinal directions. So we'll be looking at maps and looking at the different symbols of maps and seeing what those different symbols mean. We'll be building our own maps um, of our bedrooms and of our classroom. And then they'll also be using directions to tell the direction um, on a map. So go north and then turn east here and then go west and then turn south here. So we'll be using um, those words north, south, east, and west this week when we're talking about directions on a map. So that's kind of like our overview of the week. There are no anger charts for this week, so nothing to show for that. The only big thing that I know of that's happening this week is Friday is going to be reading in the school's day. Um, and right now I currently have seven different parents coming in. So it's going to be a just a whirlwind of people coming in and out, which means we probably won't get a lot done on that Friday. So it'll probably just be a very quick test day. Um, and just reading all day long so hopefully i can get everything in monday through thursday so that way friday we don't have much to worry about also luckily we are not doing our um actually no we are doing our tickets to on friday so that's i got some time too so i really need to make sure that i get my stuff done um like i said we didn't have to do anything for friends of pencils but i do want to show you our prizes that we have for this week so they've been introduced to majority of our prizes that we'll have throughout the year. Um, there is a new one in here that I think will be a hot commodity because um, they've not had been able to keep this school supply and for their pencil prize, they'll be able to keep it for themselves. So super quick, let's go to the old stuff and then I'll show you what the new one is. So old stuff, they can always get their own little pad of sticky notes there's about seven or eight on each one they're all in different colors so they can choose pads of sticky notes they can choose different pencil toppers here's two i won't show the rest because of time um, another one are 3d erasers that they can choose from um, and these 3d erasers they actually come apart so you can pull them apart and they come into different pieces we have we have our mechanical pencils. So has their eraser on the top, and then they open up the lid, and it has the uh, lid. And then they can take that lid and put it in the bottom once it gets dull, and it'll pop up a new piece of lid. Um, and then what we have for our oh wait, and we also have some more smelly pens. So this one smells like apple. And there's a couple others in here that I'm not what I'm looking for. So the new friend of pencils that we have in here are going to be dry erase markers, which I know you're probably thinking, dry erase markers, what? Well, here's the thing. My kids in our room, um, they do not keep dry erase markers. I actually keep them um, in a bucket. And when we need them, they just all go to the bucket and just grab one of the dry erase markers. I don't care which one um, and use it that way. And they're all black in the bucket. These are going to be um, color dry erase markers. And if they choose this, um, like I said, they'll be able to keep it in their pencil pouch because it's theirs to keep. And they can use this whenever we, um, whenever they need it. So if we're doing a group activity where we need our marker, a dry erase marker, instead of getting a black one, they can choose their own. Um, when they're doing a phonics game or a mystery picture or something that involves a dry erase marker, they can choose to do use theirs instead of the black ones that's in the basket. And um, if they do choose this, I'll write their name on it just that way. If it gets lost or possibly so you can, um, <laughs> we'll know whose it is because it'll have their name and number on it. So that way it kind of um, diminishes the possibility of it getting taken and put in someone else's pencil pouch. Um, but those are our choices today. Unfortunately, I do have three friends that did not get Friends of Pencils this week. And I know one of them is going to be very upset when they see that there are color dry erase markers that they can keep because I know that he would really be wanting that. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow morning. Um, I am going to go ahead and get out of here because I'm all done. And I will see you guys later on this week. What's up guys? It is Wednesday, September the 20th. It is after school. It's about 2.58. Ooh, 2.58. Um, I'm going to get out of here in just a second, but I wanted to talk to you about what we've been doing so far this week. So as you guys know, 
in math, we're doing, um, what are we doing in math? <laughs> so in math, we're doing counting on to subtract. So we're taking subtraction sentences and turning them into addition sentences. I can kind of show you what we did today on the screen. But all it is is just being able to take that subtraction, turn it into addition, and being able to use our different tools to do that. So here's what we did yesterday. So we would have we have our subtraction problem. And we would talk about what we need to start it, how to start with. So we would talk about number bonds and how nines are total. Four is one of our missing one of our parts. So we have another missing part. So we would start with that one part and add some more till we get to our total. So we would do that. That's what we did yesterday on Tuesday. Today, that's not math, that is social studies. Today, we used number paths. So again, same concept, we get our subtraction sentence. We talked about starting with that one part at five and then count on some more to get to our total nine. We used number paths today. We also talked about using um, our number bond, talking about the missing add-in. And then we also did uh, our counting on strategy too. So our counting on strategy would look like this. So if we had set there seven bikes, four red, the rest are black, we would start with four. And then we would add more until we get to seven. So this one would be five, this one would be six, and this one would be seven. This is a strategy that we've been doing since the first week of school, well, second week of school, with our first lesson, which was counting on to add. So we're still using those same concepts and strategies to help us solve these subtraction problems. So it really just builds on each other. Um, and my kids have been really successful with it. We have uh, one more day tomorrow. And then after that, we have our review and assessment day. I'm really um, excited to see how they do on that. Everybody's been doing fantastic on it. I still, like I said, have a couple who are struggling not so much with um, the concept, but more so than the follow through where they really just need me prompting. What do we do first? What do we do second? We count on until we get to what? So they just need that extra prompting support, but I don't give them really the numbers that they're starting with, what strategy they're supposed to do or anything like that. They're able to do that on their own. Um, so we'll just continue working on that, like I said, and then and build that math fluency up for them. In phonics, we're doing short U and QU. We practiced our sight words this week. Um, we've practiced our decodable text this week. Tomorrow, they'll get their decodable questions for cycle four. Um, and then Friday, we do our assessment where I give them 10 words. They read it. Then I give them a dictation sentence to write. And then I assess them one-on-one -on, -one on reading automatically, reading uh, words that are in their phase, as well as reading uh, their sight words for the week. And I think I showed you guys what that cycle assessment looks like. If not, I'm going to put it up right quick for you. So here's the front. This is what we do, whole group, 10 words that we uh, hear, and then they write it. And then at the bottom is the dictation sentence. Usually it's like four or five, maybe even six if I'm feeling frisky, um, words in the sentence. And then on the back is the one we do one-on-one. -on -one. So again, like I said, depending on their phase, they read those words, and I'll see if they can read those automatically. After that, we move into our sight words for the week and see if they can read those automatically as well. For EL, we have finally finished making our magnificent things. So just to kind of show what they did with that, here is my mailbox. And we got done with that. We added some decoration and detail to the sides. Here is our fully functional snack box, snacks included. I had a friend um, tell his mom that he needed to bring lots of snack for a snack box holder. So there's that. Um, right here, we have our lost and found bin along with its label. Lost and found stuff goes in here. Bigger things were supposed to go in the side, but they covered it up. I'm not sure why, but whatever. And we have our personalized bathroom sign uh, that look like this. Personalized bathroom passes. So if they need to go to the bathroom, there's that for them. What we're gonna do the rest of this week and into next week, 
now that we've built, we've used our tools and habits of character, now we're going to be writing about how we use those tools and habits of character. Um, going through the process of making our magnificent things, I made one as well. I made schedule cards. You'll see them up here so that way when uh, you're asking when snack is, when lunch is, when special area is, you have the time for that. And you'll see I have two different kinds up here. So I started out with just making cards. It looks like this. And we talked about what we could do to revise. So the first two days was just building. And then when we came back this week, we talked about how we revise and make it better. So we talked about what type of flaws that it had. One flaw that they said was, when all of my cards looks like this, you really couldn't read that from far away because it was in pencil, it's hard to read. So making sure that we use crayons, markers, whatever, to make those uh, to make those pop and we can read them from far away. And then we also talked about how my magnificent thing has things on it that I don't necessarily need. They don't really help it do its job. It's just there for decoration, but we might not need it. And so we talked about how sometimes revising doesn't mean add to, sometimes it means we need to take stuff away. So that's why you see these don't have it anymore because I took those away. And now I, used, I left that up there just to show that difference between the two. So that way when they worked with their groups, they were able to figure out, okay, is this part something that I actually need? Yes or no. Um, but that's EL. In STEAM, we're going back to social studies. We're been, we've been learning all about map symbols and a compass rose. Today we did, I'm gonna turn on the light because it's kind of dark in here when I get to this side of the room. Boop. So today we did kind of like a little mini assessment about map symbols. So on the bottom, it had the map symbols and it told them the different colors they needed to make those symbols. And then they were gonna match those to the ones on the on the map so being able to use a map key to know where what things are uh later on this week we're going to have our another assessment that will be talking about directions cardinal directions so north south east west so they'll be using the map key but they'll be telling if objects are north of something else, if they're south of something else, if they're east or if they're west of something else. So that's what we'll be using for our assessment on Friday. Also on Friday, we have reading in the school's day. Um, and I have seven different parents coming to read today. So uh, seven different parents coming to read on Friday. So seven parents in 15 minute slots, that's gonna be over an hour of reading. Um, so, what in the world is on my floor? Do y'all see that? I know we didn't paint today. I know we didn't use marker. Well, we did use markers today. Is that a marker? What is that? Anyway, reading of the school's days Friday. Seven parents are coming to read. Um, so it's going to be a jam-packed day on Friday, nothing but testing and reading. So we'll test a little bit, then we'll read. We'll test a little bit, then we'll read. Um, and then next week, we have our uh, we'll have our field trip to the pumpkin patch. So super excited for that. That's also our last week before fall break. And then when we come back, we'll have report cards and um, conferences. And then, yeah, well, that's it. I'm um, just super proud of them on their magnificent things. Honestly, I know I keep going back to that, but I really am just super proud. I think this year, this year was the smoothest that this project has ever been. Um, and it just makes me feel good to know that I did not have to go to any group and like do stuff for them. The only thing I did for them is if they needed like a big thick box that was cut, I cut it with my box cutter. But that was it. Everything else was all on the kids. The writing, the tape, the cutting, the the coloring, the putting stuff together. I did not do any of that stuff. It was all on them, and they did such a great job. So super proud of them. Um, it's about 310. I'm going to stop talking because I need to go get my stuff for the gym. So maybe I'll see you. Maybe I won't. If this isn't the end, then I'll see you in a couple of seconds. It just depends. All right. 
What's up, guys? Happy Friday. It is the end of the day. It is 2.50. I'm gonna see if I can get this done in 10 minutes or less. So, just a quick recap. Today was ringing in the school's day. I had five different parents come in to read today, and it was a great experience. Um, some parents read two books. The kids loved it. They were laughing. They were focused. They were just really being respectful, being responsible, doing the right thing, all that stuff. So, shout out to my parents for coming in and reading today. Um, and I was actually quite surprised about how much I got done today. So, I mean, we had five parents reading. I gave them 15 minute blocks throughout the day. So we got through all of that. We did a math test. I did their decoding today for their spelling. I did their uh, actual spelling test today for their phonics. Um, we did our um, EL today, which I was really nervous about getting to. Um, and we did our ticket store today. So all of that inside of the craziness that is reading the school's day. So super proud of that as well, because that really showed that they were really on it and being able to, you know, just go with the flow. Um, so real quick, I wanna talk about what we did today. Math test, here's what our math tests look like. So there's always five questions. Um, some of them, depend, uh, they vary depending on um, if they have pictures or not, if they have to write the whole sentence or just fill in the blank. So. Here's what it starts off with. It usually starts off with those picture supports as well as just that fill in the missing part to the number sentence. So here's number one and number two. Um, and with our math test, I always tell my kids, if it gives you a picture, you have to use that picture. So looking back at this for number one, how it has, uh, Luna has seven balls, five are big, the rest are small. It starts them out with five. So they have to use that picture to count on two more. Now, for this one, it's a number path. So they can choose whichever they want to do. So with this one, eight children are playing, five go home, how many are left? They can either start at eight and count back five, or they can start at five and count on some more until they get to eight. However they want to do it, that's up to them. They just have to use that number path. And then again, fill in those blanks. And here's what the rest of it looks like. So number three, doesn't have a picture. Number four doesn't have a picture. Number five doesn't have a picture. Now, I always tell my kids, even though it doesn't have a picture, that does not mean you just write whatever. I want to see what you're thinking. So I tell my kids, if it doesn't have a picture, you have to show how that is, whether you want to draw your circles, whether you want to use a tape diagram, whether you want to draw your own number path. I don't care how you do it, but you just got to show me how you got to that number. So number three, they make their picture and then they fill in those blanks. Number four, they draw their picture, fill in those blanks. Difference between four and the other ones is that both add-ins are missing. So they have to put those add-ins, put them together and do the subtraction sentence as well. And it was very funny watching them because I had some friends before um, that didn't draw their picture and I had like three of them put three plus three. And I had to go back like, I want you to read your story back. And I want you to see if that number sentence makes sense. And I said, and if it doesn't, guess what I want you to do first? I want you to read it and then draw your picture that shows what you know. Because a lot of them, what they do is they just see six and say, oh, three plus three makes six. So I'm just trying to write three plus three, which is true. I mean, it's not, that part's not wrong. It just doesn't match what you're trying to solve. So we really got to make sure we're attending to that precision, making sure that we are following exactly what the problem's asking us. So that was something interesting that I saw. And then once they read the story, they were like, oh, and I was like, that's why we read the story. Um, and then here's number five that we did. And again, show the picture and then they had to circle the correct answer. Now, super quick, going back to number four, the ones that made the mistake they are the ones that went ahead of me. Now, I give my kids that option. I say, we go through the entire quiz before I even give it to them. So I don't necessarily tell them what to do, but we read through each problem and I show them like where they need to put their answers so that way they don't miss anything. And then I give them their test and I say, hey, I'm always gonna go back and read every single problem and give you some time in between um to solve it i said if you want to wait for me to go to the next problem that's a smart choice to make because i'm going to remind you what that you need to put your answer here and here or that you have to draw your picture whatever some of you might want to go ahead of me that's fine but just know if you turn that paper in and you're missing a picture or if you put the wrong number down it is wrong 
Um, and before the past like six weeks, math has been very, I mean, it's, I mean, it's just a review of kindergarten really. But this week is where we're really starting to get into more of the harder things. They've never really had to go back and forth between addition and subtraction in kindergarten, but we are now. And so this is where a lot of my kids, where we had to have that talk of math is hard. Math might be harder for some other people and it's okay. But what's not okay is just saying that you know it when you really don't. I had to have that conversation a couple of times this week with them um, because some of them, they're just not used to math being hard because addition comes so easy to them because we're adding with, because in kindergarten, they were adding within five. But now we're adding and subtracting within 10. So it's getting a little bit harder. And then literally after fall break, we're going to be adding and subtracting within 20. So I told them like, it's only going to get harder. So it's better for you to tell me now, hey, I don't understand this so I can help you rather than you keep saying, I got it, I got it, I got it. But then because it's getting harder and harder and harder, you don't know what you're doing. So I had to kind of have that heart to heart with about four or five of mine, but they persevered through it today. Like I said, for uh, our phonics day, we do our spelling and decoding. That was with you and short you. We sprinkled in some balloons, sprinkled in SH, sprinkled in CH. Um, in that as well for a power review. And then for EL, we worked on writing our um, paragraph, our informational paragraph about our magnificent things. So I know I showed you earlier that we're done with them. Yesterday, we talked about um, how we do our writing about our magnificent things. So here's what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we just talked about writing a focus statement. So I wrote my focus statement. We talked about what it needed to do, what it had to have, what the job of the focus statement is. And then they wrote their focus statement. So I'll show you one of the focus statements that my friend wrote. Here's that friend's focus statement. I use tools to make a mailbox. And then today, on top of all of the stuff that was going on, we did not write just one detailed sentence. Today, we wrote two detailed sentences. So here are my two detailed sentences. I used scissors to cut the paper and I used markers to write the words. So we have our focus statement. It talks about what we did. And then we have our detailed sentences. It explains in more detail. So it tells us how we did it. And it tells us what tool we used and how we used that tool. And after that, I gave them their sentence stem, and then they wrote their two detailed sentences on their two pages. So here's that same person's uh, first detailed sentence. I used scissors to cut the paper. And then their second, I used markers to write Mr. Kelly. And that's true. Next week, we're gonna do our conclusion. We'll wrap up on Tuesday, writing about putting those sentences and making it into a paragraph. And then on Thursday and Friday, because Wednesday's our field trip, Thursday and Friday, we'll come back and we'll do our paragraph over how we use habits of character. So super excited to see how they do with that. They've been doing great so far with it. I've, they've been just totally rocking it out. Um, the one thing we did not get to today was our social studies with the cardinal directions. Um, I'll just try to carry that over into next week. Um, since next week is Tennessee symbols, that's very, um, direct. Like this is what it is and it's not anything else. So I'm thinking I could spend maybe two days on Tennessee symbols and then spend another two days catching up on, um, cardinal directions. And then that way I can be caught up in that. And then after that, after next week, we have fall break. So <laughs> after next week, we'd be a quarter of the way done with the year, which is super hard to wrap my head around, but I'm glad that it's here. Um, everything is still going great. My kids, I think, I think, I think over fall break, I'm going to move some friends around because they've been sitting in the exact same seats that they've been in since the first day of school. Like I've not had to move any kid. Well, actually that's not true. I moved two kids. Um, but everybody else has stayed in the same spot. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it up a little bit for fall break. When they come back, they'll have some new seats, get some new friends around them, see you know how they interact and stuff. But I mean, I've not had any issues with anybody so far, which is fantastic. Um, I did not beat my time. 
it's 301 but it's okay because i'm done uh thanks so much for sticking to the end if you have stuck to the end if you like this video make sure to give it a like if you enjoy these types of videos uh, give me a subscribe and hit the little notification bell that lets you know every time I post. It's usually on weekends, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and that's it. I will catch you guys next week, which is the week before fall break. See ya.